Hey everybody, welcome back to the Mantis Experience. So we are here at the Padre Island National Seashore camping on the beach in our 2020 Taxa Mantis. like us, meaning have never camped on a beach before, there are some things that you need to come to expect. There are pros and there are certainly cons to actually camping on the beach. And that's what I plan to cover for you in this video today, just so that you can know what to expect when you come out to the beach and camp, whether it's in a taxa mantis, another taxa habitat, in a tent, or in a different type of camper. Now because we are on vacation, I'm not gonna spend my time making the rest of the video from here. I wanna go out there and be with my family. So that's what I'm gonna do when I get home. I'll make the rest of the video to share the pros and the cons. I'm sure we're going to think of a number of other things that we haven't thought of yet as we drive back to uh, Fort Worth, Texas. So we'll think about those and make sure that we include them in this video. Uh, but like I said, it's a, it's a crazy experience. It's different. It's not like anything else that we've done before. But I think it would have been more enjoyable had we known a bit more about what to expect when we actually got here. So when I get home, I'll finish the rest of the video and uh, we will take it from there. So we've actually been back from our trip to the beach uh, for a couple of months now, and that's given us a good opportunity to really think through, uh, you know, what we loved and some of the things that we didn't love about uh, camping on the beach, and that's been really good. So what I want to do is walk through, as I mentioned earlier in the video, some of the pros, some of the cons, even just some simple lessons learned, uh, and that's what I'm going to spend the, the rest of this video talking about. The first thing that I would put on the list of pros is just being on the beach. You are able to be on the beach 24 hours a day, seven days a week for as long as you choose to be there. And there are some incredible things about just being at the beach. And because you're on the beach 24 seven, it gives you an experience unlike any other time I've ever been at the beach in my life. For instance, waking up in the morning and drinking coffee, sitting on the beach, going to sleep, hearing the, the, the sound of the waves crashing in. It just made for such an amazing experience that I, I can't recommend it enough from the ability to just be on the beach, be consumed by the beach for you know, as long as you want to be. The second thing that I list as a pro for camping on the beach, any of you who are parents of young children, you know the deal when you go to the beach. Mom and dad are carrying all the toys, all the floats, all the stuff that we swore we would never carry when we found out we were becoming parents. But alas, we do it with love. And so when you're camping on the beach, the beautiful thing about it is the stuff doesn't have to go that far. I mean, we were we were literally, uh, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 feet from the, from the water and the stuff would go out to the water and then we would just pull it back in behind the camper uh, when the day was done. Uh, we kept it out of the roadway, so to speak, 
Um, but it was just a very simple pull it back and forth and you could even have your kids doing it because you're not going uh, a quarter mile down to the car and then you know how it goes. So really that made for a much more enjoyable overall experience, just not having to carry the pots, the buckets, all that stuff to and from a, you know, your typical place would be like a beach house or, or uh, a place near the beach where you're staying. You just pull it out, pull it back, and you're good to go for the day. The third thing that we really loved having with us when we were at the beach was our solo stove. I know you're probably sitting there thinking, what a shocker. Uh, I'm always talking about the solo stove, but it's for good reason. It just becomes this place where we make memories. Uh, so when we were able to sit down and have s'mores on the beach at night, it was such a fun experience getting to do that. It's in a different manner than you typically get to uh, consume the experience of the solo stove. And also we went back in March, it was uh, spring break week. We were quite caught off guard by the weather. It was wet, it was cold. Anybody who's been down to South Texas on the beach knows that it's always windy. So we were very, very thankful to have had our solo stove uh, while we were camping down on the beach. Now I'm gonna shift gears for a second and talk about some of the cons or just some of the things that you need to think through if you're gonna go down to a place like Padre Isla National Seashore where there's, I think, 70 miles of beach that you can camp on. And so the first thing that I would reference is just the access or the lack thereof to resources. If you're going to go down and you know you've got everything that you're going to need for the amount of time that you're going to be there, then how far down you go doesn't really matter. I had to go back into town one day and even though we were just a handful of miles down the beach, you go slow down the beach, going into town wasn't exactly close. It took me about two to two and a half hours to get there, go to the grocery store, make one other stop, get some gas, and then to come back down to where we were camping. So just be mindful, be thoughtful. I know we should always do this when we're camping. We should always be prepared. I wasn't. I didn't think that it would take so long to get to resources that we might need. So it just took time away from me getting to sit on the beach doing nothing but being with my family uh, and required me to, to drive for a while just to get a few things that we needed. The second con that I will mention, I also listed this as a pro, it's being on the beach. You just have to come to terms with the sand. There's nothing you can do about it. And I know there's people that swear they've got the best trick ever, or they talk about using baby powder. And to be fair, I didn't have baby powder. Maybe that works great, but you're just going to be covered in sand the entire time. And you might as well just accept it. The earlier that you accept it, the more enjoyable the trip will be. So just understand that it is a pro. It's also a con to be on the beach 24 seven because you will be sandy both inside and outside of whatever it is that you're camping in. Uh, sand is just going to be everywhere. One thing that I learned, um, I happen to have a pair of real thin long johns or thermals, whatever you want to call them. That made it a lot more enjoyable for sleeping in the bed because there was sand in the sheets, and no matter how much we took them off and shook them out, there was still sand in the sheets. So if you have a light pair of thermals, that worked really well for me to not feel like I was just rolling around in sand throughout the night while I was trying to sleep. The last thing that I'm going to mention as a con to camping on the beach is purely the cleanup. When we got home, we have a routine that's the first thing we do is we just clean up we pull all the stuff out that you know drinks and and food and all of that we just get it out we try and sweep the floors vacuum we just get it clean so that the next time we want to go we don't have to worry about it the cleanup from camping on the beach took us probably four to five times longer than what it typically takes us to clean up 
as I mentioned a moment ago, it's just the amount of sand that gets everywhere. It gets in every nook and cranny uh, throughout our taximantis, but regardless of what you're in, it's going to be everywhere. I talked about just accepting it, and you need to realize that when you come home, the, the cleanup effort is going to be significant. So much so that I don't know that I'd want to go camping on the beach for a quick weekend trip, like for two nights. It probably wouldn't be worth the effort in the end, but if I'm able to go for four or five nights, then I would definitely say the effort to clean up is worth the amount of time that you get to spend at the beach. The last thing I'm going to talk about are not necessarily any pros or cons, just really some lessons learned from the experience of camping on the beach. So the first thing that I would say, uh, actually I, this happened through a phone conversation talking with uh, another guy that owns a Taxa Mantis as well. Um, and we, what we talked about was just limiting your stuff. Uh, there's a lot of things that we have in our camper that we don't use every single time we go out. And because of that, if we could have had the foresight to say, we're not going to use these things and go ahead and pull them out of the camper, the cleanup effort would be so much easier in the end because during the cleanup, we literally took every single thing out of our Mantis and hosed it off, used an air compressor to blow it off, but it was every single thing that was in there came out of it. And if you limited your stuff and only took the things that you're actually going to need and use, then that would just be that much less that you have to clean up on the back end. The second thing I would say about lessons learned, and maybe this is specific to Padre Island National Seashore, where like I said, it's 70 miles of beach. When we got down there, I was, I was admittedly very nervous of the people driving up and down the beach. I've got three young kids and you know, safety is paramount. Um, and where you camp, you kind of camp closer to the, the dunes and then you kind of, you, you walk across the road uh, where the cars go up and down and that's where you get towards the water. And I just had this in my head that I expected it to be like a highway where, especially being spring break, I didn't know what to expect. Were people gonna be drinking and driving way too fast down the beach? I just didn't know. And I'm so thankful to be able to say that that was not what we experienced in the least. Everybody was incredibly respectful um, as they were driving down the beach. And also just by its very nature, it's a long flat stretch of road. You can see cars coming for literally a uh, half a mile or more. Um, and you know that they're coming your direction. So as long as you're paying just a little bit of attention, nothing's really going to sneak up on you. Um, and you're going to have time to get your kids, to your pets, whatever the case may be, out of the, the, the roadway and into a safer spot. Now, don't take it as you're never going to have someone driving too fast. I, I would still be very cautious if I were going back, um, just because you, you never know what might happen and all it takes is one person that makes a bad choice. Be cautious, be cognizant, be aware of your surroundings but just know that you have plenty of time to be able to see any traffic that is heading your direction. The third thing that I'll mention, and at first I had this as a con, and it's really not a con, it's just a part of nature. It's just understanding high tide and low tide. Um, you can get a report when you go out to the beach. You just, you need to try and understand how far in the tide actually comes. We got pretty lucky um, our solo stove was not very far from the edge of the camper and I bet it was pretty close to getting washed away because the tide definitely came up under the solo stove. It's not terribly heavy so I wouldn't have been shocked had it gotten washed away. So again, this isn't a con, it's just something for which you need to be aware because um, the last thing you want is some of your stuff or even worse, your tent, your camper, whatever the case may be getting washed away by the high tide that comes in, uh, especially in the middle of the night. The last thing that I will mention as a lesson learned, anytime you are somewhere that is run by the National Park Service, 
Uh, and then depending on where you're going, maybe some other places, a lot of Texas state parks have this, but the junior ranger program is such a fun program for your little kids to be able to do different things and learn about the environment which they're in. Uh, we were able to do it at Penn's and it was a lot of fun. We got to learn about a, a number of different things. They also, the Rangers gave us a trash bag. And so my boys and me, we walked up and down the beach and filled probably a 50 gallon trash bag full of trash and were able to take it back up to the dumpsters at the end ultimately leaving the beach better than we found it. And so we felt good about that, but don't forget about the Junior Ranger program, especially if you and your family are relatively new to camping. Um, the, the, the Junior Ranger program just makes it a ton of fun for the kids. They get to earn a little badge, and then every one that they go to, especially with the National Park Service, they get sworn in. It's a different badge, everyone's unique. So it's something that they can constantly look forward to doing when you're out on these trips. It's just a lot of fun. So I always recommend the Junior Ranger program for any families that have young kids. Can you say smile, say cheese? So one thing I will say is that Padre Island National Seashore is the best. It's the best. It's absolutely spectacular. Cannot recommend it enough. We cannot wait to come back and enjoy it in some slightly warmer weather. So that being said, thanks so much for tuning in to the Mantis Experience. If you have any other questions or comments or feedback or thoughts of how we can do this better, please put it in the comments below because we will be coming back here as soon as we possibly can. We're gonna be coming back in summer. Boom!